Hey, I'm uh, Jennifer Villa, and that's my partner back there filming, James. Hello. Uh, it is quite late on a Friday night, around 9 p.m., but uh, we finally were able to get our project working. Uh, as we're about to demonstrate for you, we've gotten serial communication to work between two DE2 boards to send encrypted messages yes. from one to another. So uh, we've also been able to implement serial audio communication, which we will show you in the second half of our demo. Without encryption, though. but. <laughs> We could work on that. <laughs> so, um, I'll take over from here and let James walk you through a little bit of this part of the demo. All right. So, our system relies on a shared key communication uh, on a shared key system. So, um, actually, private key system. So, um, both boards share a key, and which are loaded into a linear feedback shift thread, shift thread sir, and from this key, we generate random bits, which we're going to use to scramble the data that we want to send to the other party. And as the party gets this uh, this data, it should be able to um, use the, the random bits to get uh, to XOR and get the original message back again. So to start our demo, we need to set up the same key on both boards. Um, okay, so let's set a key of, I don't know, so say five, five. and four. All right. And over here, five and four. So we press the reset button to load the keys into memory. And we're good to send our first message now. So I'm putting the switches back to zero and let's decide on, this, on the message to send to the other board, say a 12 and a four. And hopefully, we should see the same bits on the other side. Keep your fingers crossed. Yes. Woo! Great success. So, <laughs> this is our first part of the demo. We got the right bits to appear on the other side. Now, Just to prove we aren't lying to you, now we're going to send bits from this board to the other board. <laughs> yeah. So, let's see. Now I'm going to send a 2 and a 7. And hopefully 2 and a 7, the bits 2 and a 7 sh uh, and 7 should be should appear on this board. So Yay! There we go. Now to sh um, what else do we have to, to, demonstrate, to demonstrate that we're not just sending unencrypted information. We're going to show you what the information would look like in the event that we did not have the decryptor protocomputer working. So we we are exploring data uh, from the LFSR and if we try to use that data without decrypting we should basically see random bits because the LFSR is a, a construction that uh, out of a starting key produces random uh, random bits from as, uh, as it's clocked. So now I'm going to send the same message, uh, bits 5 and 12, to the other board. and But I disabled decryption on the receiving board. So we should get um, uncorrelated bits. Let's see here. I press the set button, and there we go. We get random a random bit string. And if we try to do that again, we get a different bit string. This represents the fact that we've clocked out a new pseudo-random sequence from our uh, sender encryptor LFSR. Yes, because the LFSR um, generates new bits based on its current state. So, and the new bit is added to this to the to the future state. So. This means that the way our encryption system works, uh, one particular message doesn't always map to the same sequence. Exactly, which makes it a little more secure than other encryption algorithms. So to prove that we are still able to decrypt the message, we're going to turn the decrypt switch on and send the same, send the same message. And we hopefully, we should see also the bits 5 and 12 on the receiving board. And Woo! there we go again. Yeah. yeah. All right, we've still got one more feature. Yes. So <laughs> since we're using serial communication, using a very high speed clock, it, uh, we're using the 27 megahertz clock, megahertz clock that's present on each of the boards, we implemented a feature that requests uh, the, the user to reset the board and in enter a new key. 
And why would that be necessary? Sometimes, sometimes when doing serial communication, we miss packets. And we, uh, if we miss a packet during um, encrypted communications, we, our linear feedback shift registers are going to be misaligned, and they are not going to be able to encrypt or decrypt data properly anymore. So here's a demonstration of, a feature of this feature. Pressing the, uh, pressing the recode button here should. See, it sends go. a message to the other board, uh, and it's saying that this board right here wants to reset the key and restart. And this is shown by the LED uh, 6 being lighted on. And similarly, we can request from this board to the other board to, res uh, to be reset. So pressing here, we also get a flag on the other board. And to so make now, use of this yeah. feature, mm -hmm. we can just set another key on both boards. Say, I don't know, uh, 13 now on both. Reset, and now we can start sending messages again. So now, now I'm going to start sending messages from this board, say 5 and 10. And, oops, it seems we have a tiny problem. I think we're getting a one here wrong. So let's try this again. Um, original key was 13, right? So 13 here, 13 here, reset. Make sure that we get the new key loaded on the processor properly. And now let's send the what was the same message? Well, let's try another message, 0 and 2. And there we go. We get a 0 and 2. So basically, that whole part of the project was just to demonstrate the importance of the recoding signal. <laughs> uh, as, we, as you see, it, serial communication is not flawless, but we implemented features that um, hopefully will gracefully recover from an error state. And yes. Great. Yes. So I'm going to let James start setting up the audio portion of the demonstration. I'm just going to talk to you a little bit more about how our project makes use of the uh, protocomputer as well as finite state machines. Uh, the protocomputer has been used to implement encryption and decryption. So each DE2 board has two protocomputers loaded onto it, uh, one that functions to encrypt the data and one that decrypts it. Uh, the protocomputer has had several instructions added to it, as well as several special purpose registers. The registers added included uh, registers to uh, capture the data from the keys, as well as a register to output encrypted data to the sender module. Uh, there's also a register to receive data from the receiver module for the decryptor board. Uh, we, the added instructions uh, mostly have to do with the LFSR. So we've added an instruction that will take data from the keys and write it to memory. Uh, we've also added an instruction that will then take that key written in memory and load it back into the LFSR. The idea here is that the boards could always reset to the last key that they had shared in common. In addition to that, there's an instruction that implements the XOR uh, between the LFSR and the original data. This involved adding uh, to the ALU an XOR function. So uh, the way the encryption algorithm works is that the, um, the LFSR is clocked 16 times. There's a single uh, instruction that clocks the LFSR four times, one for each of the phases uh, in the phase counter. And so that instruction is run four times to clock the LFSR 16 times, and thus give you a new pseudo random number sequence to be XORed with your data to be sent. Uh, after that, the data is passed from the encryptor protocomputer to our uh, sender module. The finite state machine that we've implemented, uh, the point of that is to recognize uh, a, sender, a beginning sequence and an end sequence. This is so that when we see kind of random noise on the wires connecting the two boards, we know to ignore it. The finite state machine looks for a particular sequence, I believe it's 1010100110 to start. So basically it's a sequential state machine that throws you back to the initial state 
anytime that you see a bit that doesn't match the pattern. Uh, then once you match the start pattern, uh, the state machine remains in the next in its next state for 64 clock cycles, uh, which is sent on another wire that we have. And after those 64, it checks for our end.